Welcome to the PIO Podcast, a place for all things public information related for police, fire, EMS, and local government. An open forum to learn, grow, and develop your public information skills. You host Robert Tornabeni is a public information officer with over 10 years in the field and 27 years of law enforcement background. In each episode, we will explore different aspects of the public information officer profession. Weekly, we will delve into the field of public information by talking to other PIOs. So sit back and enjoy this episode. Good okay. afternoon. Today on the PIO podcast, this is episode 34. We have Andrew Doyle. He is a fireboat operator with the Baltimore Fire Department. Andrew, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. So, Andrew, you you are a FEMA PIO instructor, and you, you worked in emergency management crafting messages for uh, uh, social media along those routes, correct? Yes, sir. So how did you get involved in that? And, and let's talk about some of those roles that you did. So early on, when... FEMA was first developing the social media program through the University of Hawaii's Natural Disaster Preparedness Training Center. I was taking the class because I was very interested in using social media. I was using it for my local fire department at the time, and the pilot program came out. During the class, I excelled and was offered a a position to teach. And then as the program's grown, we now have three programs that are available. Each are offered to responders and citizens at no cost to the end user. I I can give you the website link for that later. And then when I took that information and took that knowledge, I brought it back home. And at that time, my director of emergency management was very progressive and he liked the use of social media. So he brought me on board gave me a role and gave me the tools to complete the task that he needed done. Excellent. Excellent. So you are currently, you are like the PIO for the fire department union, correct? Yes, sir. How is that working out uh, with, with uh, their other role as a boat fire boat operator? So I support the union operations digitally through messaging on social media or capturing information that, might be beneficial for our labor and management. And uh, as far as a fireboat operator on the personal side, sunrises over the Baltimore Harbor are beautiful. So I don't have to do too much of that. I just post the sunrise and I let everybody enjoy how beautiful our city is. Awesome. How, um, let me go back here. So in 2012, you were fairly vocal when the city of Baltimore wanted to limit the use of social media with its employees. And I know there was, um, the PIO for the police department at the time was Anthony Guglielmi, um, who is a big proponent of using social media. And you both were very vocal about the fact that the departments need to embrace it and not shut it down. What's your take on that? Yeah, so uh, actually, Anthony was in one of my classes that we had in Baltimore, and he is a wealth of knowledge and very, very good at what he does. Um, I was actually learned more from him than I could ever teach him. Uh, My take would be is that the agency needs to use it effectively, not just sporadically and not in broadcast only. Social media is meant for engaging. So just as much as you put information out, you should be interacting with your followers. Uh, Celebrities do it all the time and it, gives their fans the opportunity to connect one-on-one. On the flip side, having people in public safety, we sometimes find ourselves in precarious situations and having good roles for on duty and good rules for off duty that also allow the employees, their civil rights and civil liberties is very very important. You know, that's an interesting take. So you're, you're, you want the, the PIOs in the public sector to interact more with the, with the public. And I think that's kind of an important factor to, to really stress because a lot of agencies, the PIOs don't interact uh, at all. They, they, they just let tweets go by with, with requests for information or um, Facebook posts to go by and not interact. They lose opportunities. Don't you agree? 
Absolutely. Uh, community engagement, you know, in most agencies is a whole agency. And the ability for a PIO or whoever is deemed with the manager of the social media account for an agency can be listening and see positive interactions between members of their agency and the public. They can also get in front of negative uh, situations. They can see them early, maybe hear about them and report them up through the chain of command so that the chief or the agency administrator can be ready to deal with a possible problem. So in the way of monitoring, what are you specifically uh, alluding at? A a software or uh, just simply keeping an eye on the account as it moves? I I mean, as basic as just monitoring or paying attention to the notifications. I mean, that's that's step one. I mean, there's advanced levels of setting up searches through applications or third-party vendors, but just paying attention to the mentions. Um, You know, and if you're a positive user, and especially if you're engaging, the community will see that, and then they will be able to contact you, mention you, refer you to others that might need your help. Okay, great. So, all right, so let's talk about analytics. So earlier, before we started the show, we were kind of uh, talking about analytics and going back and forth and, and what is your, you can show your analytics or what you put out, but what's more important than by what you're putting out on the analytics side? So, the, I mean, the analytics allows you to, or a social media manager, the ability to show or demonstrate to administrators or even partners how their reach is going. You know, how many people saw this post? How many people saw this picture? It's not a foolproof. It's not 100%, but it gives some sort of data that you can show to help quantify what you're doing. Okay. So in regards to the interaction, does that not have more of an impact for the agency where they they follow up with it on the analytics side? Absolutely. You know, the more engagement, the more reach. You know, the more you're back and forth, the more people will see. Uh, We had a post yesterday. We had one of our battalion chiefs who celebrated his 51st year on the job. 51, five, one years he's been in the fire department and he was working yesterday. And I mean, the interaction between the followers was astounding and over a hundred thousand people were commenting back and forth on you know, amongst across all of the platforms. Wow, that's amazing. Sending their well wishes and congratulations. Wow, absolutely amazing. So as a FEMA PIO instructor, you do you teach the basic course, the advanced course? Which one are you teaching? So th- this is through the uh, National Disaster Preparedness Training Center. There are three social media courses. We've got uh, uh basic PIO or uh the the names change. So please forgive me if I butcher them. Um, Social media engagement strategies, advanced social media tools and techniques, and then uh, social media for emergency, uh, for social media and emergency management. I think that's what it's called. Um, And they're, uh, they're mostly virtual now. We're starting to come back in in person, but those are the, uh, the three courses that we offer. Okay, great. And you teach you teach those online currently now, but you were doing them in person. Were, were you doing them over the, all over the country, or strictly in the Baltimore area? So that we, it's been it's countrywide. It, they're available through the FEMA consortium, similar to uh, some of the other partner institutions like LSU or Teeks. NDPTC is one of the partners or members of the consortium. So through your state training officer, these courses can be requested and you know, they send two people out, usually it's two, and the equipment and material show up. We deliver the class and, you know, we do a little bit of research ahead of time. We try to um, make sure it's guided towards what the agency needs and what's going on in the agency and around that jurisdiction. So in regards to the social media courses, what are some of the key takeaways that somebody could expect to get out of those courses? Uh, well, a key takeaway they will not get is a play-by-play, step-by-step book on how to do social media. 
Um, we'll, we'll show you our best practices, some ways that have worked for others, as well as you know, ideas to consider. We'll show different ways to help justify you know, what you're doing, why you need to do it, some tools and techniques that can help you along the way, and then you know, help you work with your agency administrator and your legal on some ideas to develop a social media SOP. Okay, so in regards to the platforms themselves, what, what do you recommend an agency should consider for the types of social media platforms that, you, that they should use? So what an agency should do is listen to their audience. Where are your users, your end users active? You know, find that platform and start engaging there. Um, you know, it could be Twitter. It could be Facebook. It could be Nextdoor. It could be MySpace. Depending on where they're most active is where you want to find yourself so that you can make sure you get the right information to the people when they need it. So you're not advocating for an agency that's just starting up social media to jump into all of them at once, obviously. Pick one, start to do that well, and then go from there? Absolutely. And as anybody that has to do a, an active crisis or an active threat, the ability to try to update your three or four or five and be good at it is very, very difficult. And as the incident progresses, it may drop down to only one or two because you're only able to get that information, you know, to say you're, you're going to send a tweet out. Well, how do you update Facebook? Are you adding a comment? Are you updating the original post? Are you making an, an organic new post? You know, if you do that, then you lose all the followers from the first posts. It's, there's so many different things that can happen that getting a SOP developed ahead of time that you have approved by your agency administrator, as well as your legal can go a long ways. And, and how do you feel about having just the general staff trained about what's appropriate with the use of social media in, in a professional context? So in, in my role in public safety, it's absolutely important. Um, there is a, uh, a former news reporter who, his name's Dave Statter. He has a, uh, a segment set up on his blog for social media assisted career suicide syndrome. Oh, and it's goodness. fire and police, typically public safety persons that are posting or doing something online that is detrimental to their career. And you know, more often than not, we find ourselves in a position where we think, oh, hey, maybe this picture's cool, or hey, this is neat. But we also have to keep in mind our primary role of serving the citizens and public trust. So, so that, yes, you would you wouldn't advocate for like the TikTok uh, trend that uh, some people have gone into. Uh, I, in the right way, yes, it could be done, you know, very creatively. But if you're inside the fire line or police line tape, probably not. I I agree that there there's some right now. I I mean I I I kind of post. I kind of find some articles over the you know, in a weekly basis where literally it's career suicide for somebody because they they had TikTok or they had one of the other platforms and they were just posting things that were inappropriate or insensitive to the situation and um, they end up getting caught and then they're, they're, they're in jeopardy of their job or, or worse um, because of their behavior. And, and I think agencies don't do themselves any benefit by not having a conversation over policy, practice, and, and pattern of things that they do. So let's talk about, not specifically Baltimore Fire Department, any fire department, what are your opinion on how fire departments are handling the use of social media? Some agencies have it, others don't. What's, that, what's kind of a happy median? <laughs> uh, let's see. I mean, you have your, you know, your LA and your New York, they are on a whole nother level. And I, that also is because of their city size and the interaction. Um, around the national capital region, we have some phenomenal agencies. Uh, Prince George's County 
They started under uh, Mark Brady, who, if anybody's taken a course at EMI, probably knows. Um, his neighbor is Montgomery County, which is Pete Perringer, another fantastic uh, PIO. And then between them is Washington, D.C. Uh, Vito, they're doing a phenomenal job. And, uh, you know, you're just telling the stories of what the men and women of the agency are doing. And I have a friend that is a former police spokesperson, and he says he was is remains very jealous of a fire PIO because their job is so easy because everybody loves fire trucks. <laughs> yeah. I, I do a, <clears throat> I do a segment when I do training on uh, public information and social media and, and I put a police car up and I ask, okay, what's going to happen here? And it's, uh, Oh, they're going to arrest somebody. And I put a fire truck up. What are they going to do? What's going to happen here? Oh, they're going to help somebody. So immediately a squad car is negative, a fire department, a fire truck is always positive. It's, so it, it's a, you're right. It's so easy to, to do that kind of work as a public information officer. I agree. I, I, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, For police animals, <laughs> the mounted <laughs> unit, the nine unit, if you know, that's an easy one. People love animals. Yep. If you, yeah, if you engage those, absolutely. Uh, therapy dogs, those kinds of things, all of those are, are all positives a way to build on your profile as a, as a PIO in a police department. And, and also kids, too. Anything with kids, too, is always a positive. All right, so let's uh, freestyle this. Uh, let's freestyle a few answers here. Um, rapid fire question. Favorite go-to libation? <laughs> I, unsweetened iced tea with extra lemon. Okay. Uh, I'm, you're I'm most. <laughs> that's okay. Hey, that's why I asked a question. Most recent book you've read? Um, I'm presently reading, uh, Justin Fenton's, uh, we own the city. Oh, nice. I'll have to look that one up. Um, what's the, <laughs> yeah. m- who's been the most influential person in your career? Uh, I'd have to say it was, uh, uh, the former Baltimore city spokesperson, TJ Smith. I, uh, I've learned a lot from him and, uh, I always admire, you know, how he handled, press conferences. Um, one thing I know, he would always come outside of the police tape and talk. So he not only had the media, but the city, you know, the neighborhood was there too. And he talked to the neighborhood, not to the media. But then, you know, when you see him on camera, you know, you can see just how much he connects with everybody he talks to. And I think that's kind of important for a PIO to be able to connect to the public in general, not necessarily because the, the media is not your audience, the public is. Absolutely. So what gives you hope? <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, it's a curveball right information. now. The need yeah. for information. Okay. The need, you know, everybody desires information. And, you know, eventually it catches up to the agency or the person that they're not fast enough or they're not adequate enough and it makes them almost forces them to get better. So I hope that we as an industry will evolve to keep up with the ever changing news world. I like that. That's a good way to put it. Um, So any final thoughts that you'd like to add anything you'd like to add? I'm still an Orioles fan, despite us being in the cellar. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and here I am wearing a White um, Sox shirt. <laughs> I, 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 that's why I got. So I was there. <laughs> um, you know, uh, I'm in Baltimore. I'm Doyle zero two one three on Twitter. I frequently post sunrise photos over the Baltimore Harbor, um, or severe weather. I don't really have too many just regular photos. It's one or the other. But uh, so uh, that's the best way that people could reach out to contact you is via Twitter. They want to contact. Yeah, you? that's I, I. I will pay attention to my notifications. <laughs> <laughs> very good. All right, thank you very much for coming on the show. And that was Andrew Doyle from the Baltimore Fire Department. He's a fireboat operator. Thank you for coming on the show, Andrew. Thank you for having me. Have a great day. You too. We hope you enjoyed this episode. 
If you would like to contact the show, please email us at the PIO podcast at gmail.com. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast to get notified of the latest episode. If you are listening on a platform that allows reviews, please give us a review. We appreciate any review, good or bad. It helps us improve on each episode. Until next time, be safe.